PZ2 is a very beloved game by many. It's a classic game created from PopCap, and it's a game that still does get updated to this day. It's got a beloved and large cast of plants and zombies, each of its own unique mechanics, a huge selection of worlds, and so on. It is, however, flawed, as with everything. As a mobile game, levels tend to be very short, and strategy tends to be sidelined in exchange for a more chaotic style of play, to keep your play moving forward at high speed. While this can be fun in its own right, it does sometimes make you want to pick up Plants vs Zombies 1, an older title. You get less sun so you can't build up a defense as quickly, and levels are much longer allowing you to do more. But Plants vs Zombies 1 is far too easy to be a real challenge. You lose out on objectives too, and a lot of the zombies and plants in the first game are underwhelming. A lot of plants return from here, and those that don't are often plants like Flower Pot, Plantern, or Coffee Bean. And if you are really lucky, you'll get a plant like Sea Shroom. Wait, Sea Shroom is returning in PZ2, never mind. So, a definitive PVZ doesn't really exist. Too slow with no challenge, too fast with actual challenge. A weak plant selection with strategy, a strong plant selection with little strategy. It can be difficult at times to choose which is truly the core of Plant vs Zombies, but what if you didn't have to choose? What if we put Plant vs Zombies 1's slower pace into the sequel, slowing down recharges and sun production? What if we made each world have 10 levels, with an additional 10 to test the play strategy even further? What if we were then to add even more zombies into the more lackluster world in a sequel? Ooh, and then try to balance the game a bit better. Well, PopCap's never going to do that. It just ain't profitable, really. But maybe, just maybe, if we believe hard enough, it could in fact happen. Just, well, in an alternate universe. Was that a bit too cheesy? I mean, we are talking about a game where a crazed man goes on a search for his time and space for a taco, so like, it's fine. Probably. Anyways, Alternate Universe. Also known as Plant vs Zombies 2, Alternate Universe, or just Elf vs for short, is a Plants vs Zombies 2 mod created by Poss and Sergio Plus, with help from people like It's P4P. And, in short, I have sorta of started considering this the definitive PvZ experience. To me, at least, it takes the best elements of both PvZ games, grinds them up in a blender, throws in a stick of glue, and then, hey presto, you get out this. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I should probably explain what's going on with this mod, and why I consider it so great. Well, from the top. Elfverse's core gameplay is very unique, mostly because the mechanics tend to be in between both Plants vs Zombies 1 and Plants vs Zombies 2. Sun production is the best example. Sunflowers produce at roughly the same rate as they do in the first game, however, the sun from the sky is a lot more rapid, at least in the early game, so a player can get a lot more sun that little bit faster. In exchange, the levels will spawn a lot more zombies, so a player needs to be ready a bit faster. It isn't super slow, but it isn't lightning speed either. It's a good speed. This also allows special zombies to spawn a lot more than in the first game, which is obviously an upside. After completing each world to the 10th level, you unlock the EX levels. These levels will begin using objectives, as well as having unique threats themselves, usually in the form of ambushes. These levels give some extra plans and an upgrade, but are otherwise entirely optional, and can be done at your own pace. Note, though, that a lot of these plants may be very different. A good example is Kernel Pulse. It now costs 225 sun, but has a much higher chance to fire butter at 50%. The small kernel will now slightly slow down zombies, in addition to a damage buff overall. There are a lot of plants like this, and these plants feel very good to play with, and I seriously do enjoy them. It helps expand upon the gameplay variety in a good way. The game overall is still very casual, but it is now notably a bit harder, and can be challenging to people who aren't too familiar with how to manage early game. I'll give some tips later on to overcoming this if you're interested in playing, but for the time being I want to show off some of the content, so let's get started with the sparklies. The new things get added. These are obviously going to be a draw for a lot of people, and trust me, 
There's some cool stuff here, and a lot of it. Like, a hell of a lot of it. New zombies that shake up the established status quo. New gimmicks that redefine how worlds end up playing. A certain plant that is just straight up fun to use, and all sorts of other stuff. So, let's get started with those new zombies, eh? Reanimator is probably the most iconic new zombie. I brought him up occasionally in some videos, and here he is in the rotting flesh. Reanimator is unique as a zombie, appearing in Dark Ages. When he dies, he'll drop what he's carrying in his hands and create a tombstone on the lore. After some time, this tombstone will open up and start spawning plague peasants after some time. That's right, he spawns a second new type of zombie. These ones are just basics, but they're trying their best. Probably. Still, they serve an important role in Dark Ages, and add a zombie to a world that needs one. Now, the other important zombie isn't exactly new, but a part of a Chinese zombie. Bassist. These only spawn as part of a base boost ambush, and will jam out with their speakers. These speakers will do passive damage nearby, and send out dangerous bursts of damage occasionally, but can be destroyed to stop this. He spawns during metal, helping make the jam as a whole far less focused on metal garg, but can function outside of it, acting as constant pressure for the rest of the level, while he still remains. There's also a, kind of, new plant. Void Orchid, who is based on a Chinese plant called Orchid Mage, but has new visuals to fit in with the rest of the game, and a tweaked ability. You see, it will transform zombies into these... Void... Construct... Things... Which will attract zombies to their lane. It's a genuinely just fun plan to muck with, having a large amount of strategy associated with it, and just doing a lot of cool things in general. A unique redirector, for sure. This mod also has a ton of ambushes just across the board. From short fuse, which summons a bunch of prospectors that immediately explode, to pre-explained base boost, to piercing cold, an ambush that immediately freezes plants that touches projectile, while buffing zombies that do. These help keep levels dynamic and full of action. But, well, the levels are already like this, because Altverse has some fantastic level design, and that is something that I do believe should be brought up because there are some genuinely brilliant levels in this mod that deserve a spotlight, especially in the EX levels. So, let's look into them. A large amount of Outburst levels have unique gimmicks exclusive to themselves, which adds a lot to the game. They kind of feel like the minigame levels the first game had in a lot of ways, if that makes sense, just slotted into the main game as normal levels. Take, for instance, EX levels like Minutes Till Midnight in DAX. This level's main gimmick is a bunch of special versions of the reanimator grades we talked about before, which are entirely unique to this level. Or, Neon Mixtape Tour X9, still standing, a level where special versions of the Neon Mixtape specials will appear, which will stand in place and do their special abilities, but harder. This is a common theme of Alphas levels, with a lot of levels having unique gimmicks, concepts, and ideas that are exclusive to them. However, just as many levels use simpler objectives, just well. See AEX4, Seed Saver. This is a fairly unique conveyor level with a unique objective, don't lose more than X plants. The level gives you a ton of plants, with stronger plants being given later, but the conveyor will fill up quickly. It becomes a very unique challenge of holding onto your plants until later on, and using the shovel to ensure you can have a strong defense. Other notable levels also include the minigame levels, which are every fifth level in the world. Ancient Egypt's mummy memory was removed years ago in vanilla, but Alphurst replaces it with Tombstone Hunt. This is a minigame where the player needs to break phases, which contain graves. These graves have to be destroyed by the end of the level, otherwise you lose, which is a fairly unique minigame and is quite fun. Other worlds like Frostbite Caves gain minigames themselves, though these are ones you may already recognize from the first game. All in all, I think at this point a lot of what Elthus does right should be clear to you. It is a good mod which does a lot of things very well, and I didn't even say everything. I mean, hell, Elthus straight up has some of the best dialogue of any PZ2 mod. And I even, even talked about Timeless Avenue, mentioned that Premium Plans are free, or even explained Nighttime. There's just too much stuff. However, I think it's about time I should close up and cover how you can access the mod, and just some general advice to get started. To download Outburst, there will be a link tutorial below. It's made for Android devices and Android emulators, 
In other words, you will not be able to play Outburst on iPhones and iPads. There's not a whole lot that can be done about that, it's just how mods tend to go. If you need help, you can join the Outburst Discord, where you can join these buffoons and ask some questions, talk about the mod and whatnot. Now, I want to talk about the headstart pp.dat. This is a save file that allows you to skip a large chunk of the early game, and is a good start if you are frustrated with the early levels, which admittedly can be frustratingly slow. It's something to keep in mind. Now, with that said, I'm going to cover a bunch of tips that should make the game a little more reasonable. In other words, covering the gaps that you may need covered up. In Alphurst, you absolutely need early game insta plants or other methods to deal for the early game. If you don't have an instant plant that costs 25 to 75 sun, or something else to deal with the early game such as Peach or Endurian, then you just instantly lose in most levels. You will need an early game option, and you should always bring them. I strongly recommend bringing Potato Mine or Electricity, don't worry about it, ever since you get them at minimum. If you get a plant, you should probably try it, at least for a bit, and figure out exactly what it can do for you. Very few plants will be worthless in Outburst, and you should do what you can. You need a whole lot of sun production, so you should always run, at minimum, two columns of sunflowers. More if you can, and if you have twin sunflower, you should probably just put them about everywhere. Sun management is key in Outburst, and you should try to get the hang of it. When building decks, try to ensure you aren't running too many attackers. Attacking plants are helpful, and running two can be pretty good, but if you run too much you will be ruined by it, losing access to other good options. Just keep it in mind. Don't bring plants you won't use, basically. And with that said, I think you'll be ready to play Outverse. Look at you! It's a genuinely great mod that I think is very underrated, and it's probably my favourite way to play the game. It's something I have been streaming for the past while too, so if you're interested in seeing how this mod is played, check those streams out. Now I have to go back to do something, I'll decide later. This has been Creeps, and have a good one!